We're about to hold a vote under the Congressional Review Act. The CRA was passed in 1994 to give Congress a six-month window of 60 legislative days to review an agency rule. And if Congress doesn't like that rule, 60 days to overturn it. However, our vote today is not a vote on a notice and comment rule. In fact, our vote today is on something that doesn't even have the force of law. Our vote today is on a staff accounting bulletin issued by the SEC back in the spring of 2022. Now, the SEC has issued these bulletins, they're called SABs, for nearly 50 years without anyone ever suggesting that they were subject to the CRA. The CRA has a time limit for a reason, so that settled law is settled law, something that everyone can count on. And the CRA is limited to agency rules so that a single member of Congress can't tie up agencies and Congress with expedited procedures under the CRA by raking over the details of every agency action. Today's vote, coming more than two years after the SEC wrote the bulletin and applying to a staff bulletin rather than a rule, is far outside the scope of the CRA. We should not be holding this vote, and all by itself, that is a good enough reason to vote no. But let's talk about the substance of this SAB for just a minute. The fairness of our markets depends on transparency. Investors in pension funds and 401ks and workers who are trying to save for retirement all have a right to know what they are investing in. Securities and Exchange Commission is the guardian of those financial disclosures that give investors information about a company's business plan, uh, about its leadership, and about the risks that it faces in the market. So to help public companies disclose information about their business in a consistent way from one business to another to another so that investors can make comparisons, the SEC issues staff accounting bulletins, these SABs, to clarify guidance about emerging issues in the accounting industry, how to tell people about this business. SAB number 121 was published to provide accounting guidance to companies that hold customers' digital assets. It says that because of some of the unique technological and legal risks associated with digital assets, public companies that safeguard crypto assets for their customers should make the risks associated with holding those assets visible to investors. One way that this risk shows up is that if a company safeguards property for someone, just an ordinary company is holding property for someone like stocks or bonds or jewelry, the, the company bears the risk that the property could be stolen. And that is why companies that hold property for others carry insurance, and it's why they have really big safes. Uh, but if the company safeguards crypto, there is a special risk that's not there with other kinds of property. Crypto can get hacked. In fact, there have been some pretty major crypto hacks in which assets just vanish. The risk isn't theoretical, it is real. FTX, $600 million, poof. Binance, $586 million, poof. Ronin Network, $625 million, poof. And Poly Network, $611 million, poof. All in just the last three years. We have seen multiple hacks of crypto platforms. The unique risks of crypto can create liabilities that seriously impact a company's financial condition. SAB 121 simply clarifies how companies should account for those risks in their financial disclosures. That's all it's doing. Now there's a second kind of problem with crypto, and that is if a company safeguards property for someone, stocks, bonds, jewelry, like we talked about earlier, if the company doing the safeguarding goes bankrupt, 
the true owner of the stocks or the bonds or the jewelry can get their property back. But if the company that goes bankrupt is holding crypto, the peculiarities of crypto ownership and possession mean that the creditors of the bankrupt company could keep the crypto. The true owner may just be out of luck. Once again, SAB 121 simply clarifies how companies should make clear those risks in their disclosures. So let's talk for just a minute about what SAB 121 doesn't do. It doesn't bring customers' crypto assets onto a crypto platform's balance sheet or make the platform the owner of a customer's digital assets. Instead, SAB 121 requires disclosure of what other substantive laws, including bankruptcy laws, are already doing. This effort to reverse the SEC's accounting guidance would deprive investors of accurate information on the risks of holding crypto assets and corrode public trust in our financial system and our institutions. The vote today is about ensuring that the SEC is able to issue guidance that will help companies of all sizes produce strong, consistent, timely, and meaningful accounting disclosures. It's about protecting critical informational tools that investors and companies have relied on for half a century. And it's about maintaining the integrity of our markets, which relies on a clear, consistent accounting rule book. Democrats should stand with President Biden against this effort to attack the SEC's authority. I urge my colleagues to oppose this bill. Mr. President, I yield the floor, and I suggest an abs the absence of a quorum. Clerk will call the roll.